Yes, I really did see Jesus and in this video I will tell you exactly when, what, how that went about. Hi, I'm Alina, which means our hope, our hope is in Jesus, not religion. As I share my personal journey towards a higher level of love and spirituality, I hope it helps you on your path. Welcome to my channel. Hey. So I figured that for this special message, I might as well bring it to a special location. This is just so gorgeous. This beach is always empty. It's uh, just bright and sunny and it's weekend and there's hardly anyone here. So it's, it's fabulous. I love it. Uh, I had a vision when I was nine years old and I was just a normal kid, you know. I guess my biggest worry was uh, what will my Barbies wear tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> or my favorite Barbie at least. So um, yeah, I think I was just an average kid, but uh, nine years, you know, was also the age of uh, staring at the ceiling at night and seeing myself as this tiny speck, you know, like I would see myself in my bed and then zoom out and see like planet Earth and, and the universe and the universe is expanding so I would just feel like this tiny speck and I would always marvel at the thought that God would actually know me by name even though creation is infinite. Back in the day I, I guess I wasn't too familiar with the term vision. So yeah one night I, I had this, this dream that was while I was wide awake that was more real than life itself and um, so and um, what I saw was Jesus hanging on the cross and I was standing with the group of women that, that were crying over him hanging there so I was in front of the cross with this group of women uh, among which uh, his mother Mary and I was like right behind her she was like here and I was here and I was crying my eyeballs out. <laughs> I just remember that because it would be a scary image, right, for a nine-year-old to see like a bleeding Jesus on the cross. But I was so sobbing that I, I, I would have this blurry vision from my tears. But yeah, so but I did see Jesus hanging on the cross, and the reason I, I hardly ever spoke about the experience is because it's not about what I saw. It's about what God communicated to me as I was seeing it. And so as I was seeing it, I felt that when Jesus was crucified, not only was I there in spirit, but all God's children, before they received a body and came to the earth, were there in spirit. All the angels, all spirits, were there witnessing this moment. I knew that it was the atonement that probably I had already been taught about. Yeah, I had been taught about that in church. I was baptized when I was eight. I, it really felt like a, a covenant between me and Jesus, uh, not like something that was expected of me, but really my own decision. So, yeah, when when I had this vision, I knew Jesus was real. I, I felt, I felt this pain, like when you would watch a loved one suffer and die. That's the pain that I felt. It was really intense, and I could feel that that I wasn't the only one watching this and feeling those feelings. And I felt that as the skies. Uh, became dark that that was because of our emotions that was because we were we were going through this pain from watching our most precious precious Jesus suffer for us that's also something that I really fully understood in that moment is that Jesus really did suffer for our sins but also every challenge in life that we go through uh, and every sentiment that comes with that, he felt. He really carried our burdens. And that is not something that you can really grasp um, from pure reason. You know, it's, it's unimaginable, unfathomable. But 
in that moment, that's what I felt. I felt that that was real. And um, as hefty as that was, uh, as, as dark as that was, those feelings were in that moment. That's how big the rejoicing was the moment after. When, when Jesus groans, it is finished. This wave, this wave, huge wave of rejoicing. Went through all of us. And now I, I can't hold it together when I think of it. Just such a tsunami of gratitude and love is what I felt in that moment. And as I said, it was more real than anything I've ever experienced. And that's why, that's why I never really tried hard to put it into words because all words fall short and all tears fall short and even then when I when I had that experience I just cried for a half an hour afterwards and I just thank God on my knees because I understood I understood what it meant and um, there's no way that any adult or nine-year-old could really understand unless the spirit communicates it to you so in that moment when I had the vision and when I had this full understanding because it was communicated spirit to spirit, um, the Holy Spirit gave me some additional teaching and whispered to me that there would be a point in time when the adversary would tell me I would not be worth such a big sacrifice. He would, yeah, and he whispers that to a lot of us. Like, if, if that's what you feel, like, I'm not worth such a big sacrifice, that is a lie. That is what I, as a nine-year-old, uh, was taught by the Holy Spirit. Sure enough, uh, when I became a teenager, I went through some lukewarm years where Jesus was no longer first, but second. Um, you, you get say for a teenager, that's a reasonable place, but yeah, the truth is friends and boyfriends came first. That experience still always stayed with me and kept me from doing things that were really self-destructive. <laughs> but um, yeah, I did do things that I regret. And sure enough, I, I heard that whisper, like, I'm not worth such a big sacrifice, you know, I'm not worth repentance you know and instantly as I thought that this memory came back to mind and I knew it was a lie and that really helped me to just leave the past behind me and repent and do better uh, instead of uh, rolling around in, in guilt or whatever we human beings are so good at guilt tripping aren't we like I know I'm not the only one, right? Don't do it, don't do it. The price has been paid. Just don't guilt trip, just improve and forget about it. On hindsight, that little piece of knowledge was so important because I've seen so many people lose their faith in God. Also because modern day psychology says the brain makes it all up. That's what people read in pro-atheist books. They read that the mind is capable of making up spiritual experiences. But this was a piece of knowledge that went far beyond my nine-year-old uh, understanding or um, the things I was thinking about at that time. And also, I never heard this being taught in church until I was 22-ish. I was a uh, youth leader and one of the girls in my class had been to a youth conference and she shared her experiences of what she had learned and she shared this exact piece of knowledge. In all those in-between years, between 9 years old and 22 years old, I never heard this being taught in church. Because right in a moment I was like, <gasps> 
I remember that. Like, I was taught that personally by the Holy Spirit when I was nine. And I was excited that I heard that again. Um, so maybe nowadays it's being taught more often, but back in the day, between me being nine and being 22, I, I never heard that from any human being. And so I'm really grateful for that because that tells me that my brain could not have made up that experience. And when I was nine, there was no question in my mind that I had not made that up. But over the years, the memory faded a little bit. As I said, I had some lukewarm teenage years and that also helped fade the memory. And it's been um, only since recent years when I, I really started asking God, who are you really? Who are you apart from the filters of human beings uh, in biblical times or 200 years ago or human beings today? Leave all their human influence out and, and then what's left of you? Who are you really? God really brought this memory back to its fullness. And the most important part was when I was overwhelmed, overwhelmed with God's love for me, there's a couple of things you need to know about God's love. It is so personal. It is so, so deeply personal. Yes, God is omnipresent, but at the same time, He is a true person. And He really does feel like a personal Father to me. Um, but usually I speak of God because there's so many people traumatized by their earthly parents that they can stand the name Heavenly Father because the name Father reminds them of their youth traumas. And so I usually speak of God, but for me, God really does feel like a personal Heavenly Father. He is always there for me. That's what I felt in the moment, is that He really does know me. He knows everything about me. He knows every thought, however scary that may be sometimes. He knows my every thought, and He knows my name, and He knows me better than I know myself. And that's why I always consult Him when I have difficult decisions to make in life. Because very often He told me to do something contrary to what I wanted, and it worked out so well. And and really reinforced my trust in him, that he really does know me better than I know myself. That's what I felt as I was feeling God's love. Is It was so intense and highly personal, but also in the same moment as I felt how personal his love was, at the same time, I felt that he loved every single human being on this planet the same way, with the same intensity and the same personalness. Is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> he loves you. God loves you. And that's why I feel I shouldn't keep this to myself anymore because I know there is so many people struggling that. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Get it together. Okay. So you really need to know this. God loves you. He knows you. And nothing can ever get between his love for you and you. Except for yourself. And it's because... I had that experience because I felt that, that it really breaks my heart that people commit suicide out of despair. That's why I, I just feel that whenever God gives us an experience, it's not just for us. I feel now it's the timing to, to share it, basically because in the past two and a half years, God really rooted out all my fears of human opinion. It's not like they're not there, it's just that my love for my fellow human beings and my love for God are just so much bigger than my fear and how. And um, it really is an amazing place to be in. <laughs> you know, I'm like a total mess right now. But bottom line is, you are so loved. And I need you to know that. You are so loved by God. He knows you. And don't ever turn away from Him. He is not waiting to punish you. Jesus said, I came into the world to save it, not to condemn it. So believe it and accept it. And so in the Bible it says, to some it is given to know for themselves and to others it is given to believe on other people's words. So I am praying that you will believe on my words when I say, God loves you 
perfectly, infinitely, give it a try. Just talk to him and he's right there even when you have your doubts. So don't give up and more videos will follow. Bye!